In this video, we will take you through the details of the motor, how it functions, and how to diagnose and solve issues. Remove the back plate of the non-drive end by removing the long screw. You can now pull the plate on the drive end and non-drive end. You can use a soft hammer to get them off easily. Inside the back plate, you will find bearing covers for the bearing. There is a bearing on each end. Note that the bearings are different in size. The plates also have a waterproofing seal. Make sure these are well in place in their slots. Now place these back plates aside safely. We will only need them again during reassembly. Let's have a look at the non-drive end. The motor has various parts. We will go through them one by one. This is the carbon brush, held in place by a spring. A tensioning spring of the carbon brush. This supporting plate is called the brush holder plate. These are the two connection points that can be connected to a power source via the IEC connector attached to the motor. The carbon brush is in contact with the commentator. In case the motor isn't running when connected to a power source, have a look at the connection points. Are the positive and negative wire in good condition and properly secured, making contact with the brush wire? Then check the wires to the carbon brushes. Is there any damage? Make sure on both sides the carbon brush is in contact with the commentator. In case the brush holder plate has broken, it can be removed and replaced. We need to remove the carbon brushes first. Start by loosening the screws holding the wires. Pull the spring off and all the way back away from the brush and pull the brush out of its slot. Now the outgoing wire needs to be removed. Remove the grommet on the outside of the motor by loosening and removing the four screws. Then you can pull the grommet, rubber washer and wires out of the motor shell. You can pull out the armature on the drive end. With the help of a screwdriver and soft hammer, move the clip around in its slot. Once one end of the clip has moved to the opening, you can use the screwdriver to push it out of the groove. Push it up all the way out. Be careful, because of the tension it will jump out. Now you can pull the brush holder plate out. Use a screwdriver if necessary. Now that we've removed the brush holder plate, we can also take a closer look at the armature. This is the armature of the pump. This side is the drive end and this side is the non-drive end with commutator. This is the complete winding of the motor. You can see the commutator has several compartments called commutator segments. The polish of the commutator should be like shown in the video. The commutator can get worn. You will see a roughness or a groove developed in the commutator, like this very worn motor, which could be a sign of overloading. If the commutator looks 
like this worn commutator in the video, you will have to replace the armature to get the motor in good condition again. Let's show you a few more failures you can come across. Here you can see a melted brush holder plate. If you find a motor like this, it means the motor has heated up, most likely due to overloading. And so you need to check the setup of the pump. Are the pulleys being used within their respected limits of 6 meters total pressure and 15 meter total pressure for the SFP? In this motor, you can see the carbon brush holder plate melted. The bore got enlarged and the brushes have stuck to the brush holder plate. In this case, the carbon brush holder plate needs to be replaced as well as the carbon brushes. This is a similar case, but here you can see that the carbon brushes have almost completely worn. If you find brushes in this condition, it's time to replace them. If the motor is having an issue, also inspect the motor bearings. If the bearings are loose or worn, they need to be replaced. The motor shell consists of two pairs of magnets. If you find the magnets have come off of the motor shell, for temporary use, you can use a strong epoxy glue to glue the magnets back to the shell. But eventually the shell should be replaced. Again, this is a sign of overheating and therefore overloading. Let's reassemble the motor. We start by placing the brush holder plate back into its position. Make sure the hole in the carbon brush holder plate matches with the hole in the motor shell. Push it to the left or right once it's in its slot to completely align the slot. Place the spring. Start placing it into the motor shell on one side and slowly push it in from all sides. Hold it firm to avoid it springing loose and out of the shell. Take a screwdriver and push the clip down into its slot. Make sure it is in its groove. Confirm the brush holder plate is not moving anymore. Now place the springs back. The end of the spring faces away from the brush. This is the wrong way to place it. It should be placed like this. Now you can insert the grommet, rubber washer and wire. The rubber grommet needs to be placed into the hole. Pull the rubber washer back and use the screwdriver to push it in. Place the washer back and secure the grommet and washer with the four screws to the motor shell. Now place the armature back. Be careful with your hands. Hold the armature from the end of the drive end and let go. The magnet will pull the armature forward. In this way you avoid getting your fingers stuck or pushed against the shell. Place the carbon brushes back and route the positive and negative wires to their connection points. The positive wire is close to the wire entry point, while the negative wire needs to be routed around the edge of the plate to the other connection point. Make sure the negative wire does not restrict the movement of the carbon brush. Re-establish the connection first, the negative wire, then the brush wire, followed by the washer and screw. Tighten the screw to the brush holder plate.
Repeat the same for the positive wire. Now the spring can be placed back into position. Pull it around and up onto the carbon brush, like shown here. Check if the spring is working. Do the same on the other side. While placing the carbon brushes and spring, avoid scratching the commutator with the screwdriver, as it could increase the wear of the carbon brushes due to arcing between the commutator and the carbon brush. The same applies to the carbon brush. Avoid scratching or damaging the surface of the carbon brush that is in contact with the commutator, as it may lead to excessive sparking between the brush and the commutator, which will reduce the life of the motor. You can now place the drive end and the non-drive end back onto the motor. Once the plates are in position, the armature gets aligned and in its correct place. Make sure the holes for the screw in the back plate covers don't get blocked by the outgoing wire or that the screw will block the holes for the screws for the motor bracket. Align them well Use the soft hammer to place the back plates on. Insert the long screws and tighten them. Make sure it's well tightened and the back plates are fully in, as the motor cover is waterproof. Turn the motor to check if it's moving freely. It will feel a little bit strange because of the magnet. There should be no obstruction. You have now reassembled the motor.